Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to replace the timing chain from this Mercedes E-Class with a 2.2 liter diesel engine. So the most common symptom of a bad chain or a bad tensioner is going to be rattling noise when you start the car. It's a very specific noise which it's easy to be distinguished between other noises. Like for example when you get a chain on a piece of metal and you slide it, it's a specific sound that you can recognize. A lot of people will also change the head gasket while doing this job because you already do half of the job required to change the gasket. In that situation it's a good idea to remove as well the radiator so you can have a lot more working space in here. So if you want to see how to remove the radiator in details I've got a separate video about that. Go ahead and check it out if you want. Now another challenge is to remove the injectors, so for that you will need this tool. And again, just to keep this video short, go ahead and check out the video I made about the injectors, where I showed you a lot of tips on how to remove them. And now we can begin to detach all the parts from the front of the engine. Let's take out the hose from the vacuum pump. The vacuum pump is hold it on by two bolts, use an E10 and remove this. And since we're going to be removing a lot of parts, it's important to keep the bolts in their position. So I like to keep them on the part itself when I remove it. So in that way, I know which bolts go where. Next, let's remove the fuel line from the high pressure fuel pump. You need a 14 millimeter. You don't want all this diesel to go on the serpentine belt because then the belt will slip. With the E10, let's remove this bracket which holds the fuel line on. You don't want any debris to go in here because those can end up at the end of the injectors and that's how you can clog them up. Now with the E10, let's remove the low pressure fuel pump. All right. Now if you have a look down here, you can see the check valve. Now with the E10, there is a bracket on the high pressure fuel pump. And again, for all these parts, I've got separate video about them. So go ahead and check it out if you want. This is the return line, which can be placed separately. Now to disconnect all these fuel lines can be quite difficult, so you can see that's how you can avoid disconnecting all of them. Okay, so from this point remove as well the valve cover gasket. This can be a long process, so I'm going to keep this video short. I will skip through and go to the point where the valve cover is off. If you want to see in details how to remove the injectors and the valve cover gasket, I've got separate videos about that. Go ahead and check them out. And by the way, when you replace the timing chain, Expect to replace as well many other gaskets like the high pressure fuel pump gasket, water pump gasket, valve cover gasket because most of the time if you reuse those they might leak. So if you want to do a proper job on your engine it's also a good idea to clean it up from the oil and replace every single gasket you find. So in that way you don't need to worry to redo this job again. Alright, the valve cover is off. Now we can take this cover as well. There is a small cover on the head of the engine and then you've got the cover on the engine block with the E10. You can do pretty much everything with the E10 on this engine. We've got here the timing chain guide. Now let's remove the crankshaft pulley, use a 27 millimeter and an impact gun. If you don't have an impact gun, then you can obstruct the camshaft on the exhaust side. All right, so after a lot of struggle, I actually charged the battery of this power tool and that's how I get the bolt out. It actually smells like burning here because it was 
very very tight in there right so you gotta slowly slowly make your way out and the pulley will come out also try to give it a couple of taps from all the directions possible you don't need to be worried about the timing yet because you didn't remove the chain so here it comes so you want to remove the pulley in order for you to get access to these bolts around i'm gonna use a 12 Right, now let's take the alternator down. Now you can see the oil pan connects to this cover of the chain. So we gotta remove those bolts around. So I took the AGR valve off, now I have to take out the power steering pump as well and the AC compressor. So the AC compressor was holding on by three bolts. There is some coolant leak right there. It's a good sign. So I forgot to mention you have to open as well these two bolts which holds the engine head on the engine block. So this one doesn't come out. The exhaust bracket is here, so I'm going to lock it in position like that. Also, I forgot to mention that you have to remove the tensioner, which is right here on the side. So, and by the way, I highly recommend that if you do this job, you got to take out as well the turbocharger and the intake manifold so you can get access a lot easier to the bolts on the alternator, on the AC compressor. The oil cooler which is behind here of the oil filter we gotta remove it right now because that's the only thing which holds this plate on so yeah you basically tear down pretty much all of the car to do this job but it's not that difficult everything is step by step there are no impossible challenges so it's completely doable so yes guys this is what i'm gonna do next i will take out the intake manifold all the wiring harnesses out of the way and disconnect the oil cooler Now we've got access to the oil cooler. All right, so here it comes, guys. And finally, it's time to break the chain. You'll need one of these kits, which is a lot stronger than a bicycle chain breaker. So one very important thing to mention before cutting the chain, you can see the side which is not tensioned, it's on this side, and this side it's already tensioned, which means that when we install the new chain, the tension has to be on this side, and this one has to be free like that. In that way, we don't move the camshaft, we don't move the crankshaft either, and we can do this swap nice and smoothly. On this tool you've got a hole here which you have to match it with the pin on the other side you see it doesn't go out from there make sure that the tool sits straight and begin to tight it and here it comes it's also a good idea if the tool is old just lubricate these threads and it will go in a lot easier the pin is out it's actually a good idea to take some pictures of the chain before you remove it so you know exactly, for example, where the link was. And when installing the new one, you can also make sure that the link sits exactly in the same position you remove the old one. Now if you have a look down here, you can see the main oil pump chain. This will power the oil pump to deliver oil for all the engine. This chain can usually last for a long time and it's most likely that the tensioner will fail, especially this spring here, which will also hold uh, some tension on the second tensioner. Now if you want to replace as well 
the timing chain guides you have to remove the head of the engine because basically this job is meant to be done while you do the head gasket replacement as well so you can just inspect the guides make sure that they are not cracked in good condition and they can actually run for a lifetime if the engine was maintained now the most easiest and safe way to install the new chain is actually to connect it to the old one just temporarily connect it here then while you pull the new chain the old one will go away and the new one will take its place and that's the most easiest way to do this chain swap however if let's say the chain is broken then you don't have that luxury so i want to show you that it's possible to do this without that technique so i'm gonna slide the chain to this point okay let's pull it out from here so here it comes guys the chain is back you can see here is tensioned and there is the slack which is perfect if you are 1000 percent sure that you don't move the camshaft and the crankshaft then just placing the chain back in the same position it's gonna do the trick very easy without any special tools or stuff like that so let's reconnect this chain secure the pin and we're gonna be good to go now in order to install the pin i'm going to change this to a more thicker one now on the tool you've got a hole here so i'm going to cover it with this adapter and now i'm ready to push the pin on you can see the pin has like a mushroom on top which will prevent it from going inside the chain so i'm going to grind it a little bit this point I can push it with the tool so you see the pin here now I'm gonna make it go and be equal with the other ones okay so it goes nice all right so now it's time to put back the cover and with the new tensioner now on this cover you notice that you've got a gasket here for the coolant also the gasket for the crankshaft pulley especially this one is very important because if you get coolant inside the oil then you've got big problems okay so from this point guys in order to install back the cover you need to either take out the head of the engine or the oil pan it's easy to remove but it's impossible to put it back because both the head of the engine and the oil pan are tight and you will you will break the head gasket and the oil pan if you want to put it back right now so in one of the next videos I'm going to show you how to remove and replace the head gasket. This is going to be, this got to be a separate video because there are a lot of things to cover in there. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.